And our first is Dr. Cheryl Selman. Dr. Selman is an international author, psychotherapist, women's health advocate, and seminar presenter. Through her books, including Hormone Heresy, What Women Must Know About Their Hormones, lectures and seminars, she has empowered women all over the world to make more educated and informed choices about their health. Cheryl's latest book is Hemp Health Revolution, and that explores the history of hemp and the latest research in hemp extract around the world. Dr. Selman gives us an A to Z list of the many chronic illnesses and health conditions that have been proven to benefit from hemp extract. Good morning. We have a wonderful seminar in store. Actually, you will absolutely be inspired. You will be um, so grateful for what nature has given us. Many of you know that I have been writing and researching and lecturing about the best solutions I've come across for our health. And I've done this for close to 20 years. I have written my fifth book, The Hemp Health Revolution. I've been working diligently on this book last year and it's now released. And it is a life-changing topic. It is a life-changing book, but most of all, what we're gonna talk about is a life-changing solution to the majority of illnesses that are plaguing our society. Right now, there are 133 million people in the United States who are dealing with a chronic disease. In eight years' time, it is estimated that one half of the population in the United States will have some kind of chronic disease. Think about that, half of all Americans will be diagnosed with either cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, obesity, they may have strokes, they may have TIAs, whatever autoimmune disease is going around. Half of all Americans, what has happened to our culture? What has happened to our health? And what is it that we can do to regain the health that is our birthright, that is our God-given birthright? When it comes to healing the body, you cannot excel what nature has given us. What if I were to tell you there was an answer that exists in nature that could heal inflammation, that can eliminate pain, that can restore brain function, that can improve your sleep, that can balance your hormones, that can regenerate brain cells, that can heal post-traumatic stress, that can heal the opioid epidemic. What would you think? You think I'm crazy? One plant. One plant in nature could do that. Would you be impressed? I'm gonna give you the story and the research of the plant that will transform your life. And uh, you can see why I am excited about this. You can see why I wanted to write about it. And I wanted to write about it in a way that is easy to understand so anyone can get the gist of what this plant can do as well as put the A to Z health benefits of hemp extract. Because when I was researching this plant, and I counted up all the conditions that have been proven, they're clinical studies, it's not just me making it up, that have demonstrated improving from the use of this plant, it came to about 50 different conditions. I've consolidated them a bit in the book, but about 50 different conditions. I was amazed how many conditions that we are dealing with, suffering with, being medicated for, can be alleviated, reduced, or alleviated totally by taking this one plant. And what we're going to be talking about is the hemp plant. So the hemp plant has been in use for 10,000 years on this planet. This is a symbol, a Chinese symbol, of the first recognized use of the hemp plant for making uh, textiles and fabrics. So for 10,000 years, the hemp plant has been taken all over the world. The hemp plant has been first used in China. It went to Egypt, it went to Asia, it went to Africa. 
It was transported to the New World in with the pilgrims in 1600s. It has flourished all over the world because it proved to be so profound and effective. It was making fabrics, it was making paper, it was making ropes, it was used in building, it was used for medicines. These are documented stories, documented research, documented evidence that this hemp plant was renowned for its versatility all over the world. And then it came to the United States. So it came to the United States early on in the settlement of the United States in the 1600s. There was a time when one of the English kings mandated that every, uh, every colonist in the United States, any, every farmer in the United States needed to grow hemp because hemp supplied the raw material that made all the riggings for the boats, for the ships in the Royal Navy. And it made the paper, and it made the, it made the uniforms that the sailors wore. It was essential. So it was mandated that every farmer had to grow hemp and ship it over to, the, uh, to, to England. And then hemp grew as a product throughout the United States. All of our founding fathers, Washington, Jefferson, Adams, they all grew hemp. The first draft of the Declaration of Independence was written on hemp paper. There's a lot about history we don't remember. Ford cars used because they used hemp in making the body of that car. They found that the hemp plastic that they used in the original early cars was 10 times stronger than steel. Think about that, 10 times stronger than steel. Hemp was actually incorporated in making the plastic that, the, that was used in building cars and many other products. So not only was hemp an amazing building material, material that was a raw material for fabrics, for rope making, for paper making, but it was also a well-known and important medicinal ingredient. So the history of hemp goes all the way back thousands of years medicinally as well. There are formulas that have been found for, um, in China, in India, for relieving pain, for relieving insomnia, for helping wound healing. It was the second most popular ingredient in medicines in the United States. It was used for a variety of things, safely, no side effects, and was incredibly effective. So hemp has been part of our evolution for the history of, of civilization. It has served us in so many ways. It has been profound for every aspect of our life. So, what happened? <laughs> what happened? I mean, how can you take a plant that has been revered, that has been mandated to be grown? In the United States, around the 1930s, there were 8,400 farmers uh, having a uh, land of about 2,000 acres dedicated to the growing of hemp. Economies of states like Kentucky were dependent on hemp. That was their livelihood. Hemp was used everywhere for all sorts of things. What happened? What happened is a story that I want to tell you because until we understand history, we don't know what's happened. There's a favorite saying that I love to use that says, history is written by the winners. And the story of hemp is not only a story that will show you how much we can be manipulated, how effective propaganda is, how vested interest will take away from us the option of things that are beneficial to us but not to them. And it's a story that unfortunately, has many parallels in modern life today. So the story starts around the 1930s. Hemp was considered in the 1930s a billion dollar crop. The problem was, in the 1930s, there was this uh, industrial revolution happening. There, were new, there was discovery of oil, and from oil they were able to make all sorts of amazing products, lubricants, paints, and 
you know, material fabrics. And the man called um, Lamont DuPont, all of a sudden, they are now making amazing things with oil. They're making rayon, dacron. Plastics have come into their own. Everything that hemp had done effectively, had done, um, uh, com made commercially viable, was, you know, ecologically sound, was now being recreated through plastics. We can't have competition, can we? Well, Lamont didn't think so. So Lamont was one of the players in a very grand scheme. The second player was William Randolph Hearst. You've heard of him? He was the, 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 the tycoon, the newspaper baron. And he not only ran all the newspapers, he planted huge plantations of pine. Why did he plant huge plantations of pine? Because he was going to make paper for his newspaper from his pine plantations. The only problem was, around this time, there was a new piece of uh, a farming device created that can easily and effectively strip the hemp plant and make it so affordable for anyone to get to the raw materials to make the paper. Now, hemp paper is stronger, lasts longer, is more affordable, and every aspect of paper, it excels. Well, that didn't make William Randolph Hearst very happy, did he? Because he invested in these huge pine plantations. So these agendas of these two extremely powerful and wealthy men came together. They created an intentional campaign to demonize this hemp plant to, to create propaganda out in the United States population and take over control of this problem by eliminating it, by making it illegal to grow hemp, to sell hemp, to use it in medicines. Every aspect of hemp was wiped out of our consciousness. It started in uh, the 1930s, 1937, the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act strictly regulated the cultivation and sale of all cannabis varieties. You could not grow it anymore if you wanted to. You had to get the federal government to approve you. And that has existed to the very present time, starting to change now. You had to get permission to grow hemp from all that time. That was the beginning of the assault. Now, how do you take a plant that's been the livelihood for thousands of farmers, that has been in 2,000 medications, when, when they started to begin this propaganda campaign, you have to demonize something to make people change their minds, to make people forget. You have to bring in another story, and you have to use the media, you have to use the newspapers, and you have to use government officials, and you have to use celebrities, and you have to use anyone you can to begin the process of brainwashing us out of what nature gave us for healing. And were they successful? Yes. There was a massive campaign against the cannabis plant. There was a movie made, Reefer Madness how you go totally out of control, you know, wild, and you take any aspect of hemp medicinally or recreationally. This is a plant who didn't hurt anybody. So they restricted the growing, and then um, the war came. It was restricted, they couldn't grow it, but the supply of hemp that they used in making ropes for warships, for their, for their navy, came from the Philippines. What happened in World War II? They couldn't access the hemp in the Philippines. The Japanese were there. Now they rescinded their law and allowed a new campaign to happen, Hemp for Victory. There, there were huge posters, and they got all these farmers growing hemp again so they could make the raw material for the riggings for the uniforms of soldiers, which they desperately needed, which the farmers did, until the war was over. 
Then there was no need. Then the, the law came back in, made it illegal. So, in the 19th, it was legal, it was still legal to have medicine made from hemp, but you couldn't grow it for any other uh, industrial purposes. And then, in the 1970s, the, tight, the screws tightened even more because now they, can, they created the Controlled Substance Act of 1970. The AMA went to those meetings, I think there was just one meeting actually in Washington, pleading, pleading with the, with the Congress not to make marijuana or cannabis or hemp illegal because it was such a valuable ingredient in medicines. Did they listen? No, because there in 1970, they made cannabis, hemp, a Schedule I illegal drug, wiping out the last vestiges of any use of this hemp plant for the well-being of our country. And not just our country, it started a trend all over the world, denying us access. So, before we go any further, we have to do some clarifications. There's a lot of confusion around this subject, partially because we've been so brainwashed and there's been so much propaganda. So, we have to get clear on what we're talking about here. There is a plant called um, Cannabis Sativa. That's the Latin name for the hemp plant. Now, as you know, plants can be bred in all sorts of ways. You can uh, breed plants to have higher protein, and you can have, you know, breed plants to have brighter colors. You can breed plants to do what you want with them. In the hemp plant, there are certain ingredients and components. Some, one of the components is called THC for short. It's a component in the plant that in high amounts can create psychoactive reactions. You can get high. In other species, of the plant, it's bred to have very low, of, very low negligible amounts of this component, but high amounts of another component that has all the health benefits of anti-inflammatory, anti-anxiety, sleep benefits, so it's more medicinal without getting high. It depends how you breed the plant. We are talking about the hemp plant with very high CBDs, these components that are, are, are medicinal, and very low or negligible, and the products we're going to talk about, zero amount of THC. Which is why hemp extract plants are legal in all 50 states. We're not, is this clear? We're not talking about what is known as marijuana, which was the term that they brought in to demonize when they were doing reefer madness and they were doing the propaganda to get us to turn, to, to justify the corporate interest in, in wiping out hemp from our, from, from, from our access. Do you understand why this was created in the first place? If you, if you understand why this plant was denied to us because of vested interests of the corporate barons of the world, we'll understand why we need to reclaim what is our right to have for the sake of our health. And not only that, as this new awareness, as the dawn is breaking again, and we're coming to see what we've been denied, it's not just about using this plant, cannabis sativa, for medicinal uses. There's a huge industry booming right now as this injustice is lifted from us. Fortunately, it's only taken 70 years to wipe it out from our memory. And now we're, our amnesia is lifting. So, hemp extract made from the cannabis sativa plant that's high in this component called CBDs, no psychoactive components. I, I, you know, I'm going to keep saying that to you because I know we need to keep you know, shifting this, this brainwashing we've had. Totally safe, is made from uh, primarily the stalks, some seeds, some flowers, but primarily the stalks of this amazing plant. If left on its own, it'll grow like 12 feet tall. It's huge. It grows in all sorts of conditions. It's a hardy plant. It helps to uh, create more nutrients in the soil. It's, it, it's like truly God's gift to us. 
So um, when we talk about the active ingredient, THC legally in the United States, this, the psychoactive compound, this compounds in the plant that can have psychoactive effects make you relaxed, <laughs> you know, little high as we call it. Um, in the hemp extract formulas that are legally allowed in all 50 states, they're allowed to have 0.3% or less. As we're looking at history and what's happened, we have this man to thank for this renewal, this, this awakening, this revival of the gifts of the hemp plant. And his name is Dr. Raphael Meshulam. He is uh, an Israeli. He's a chemist. He's a professor. Uh, he is uh, researching this plant for the past 50 years. And he is the giant, he's considered the giant in the field of the hemp research and of the, of the recognition of this plant. Because when he was a young PH, uh, PhD student, he decided no one really knew what marijuana, as it's called, the, this plant that has the high THC component, no one really knew what, do they, what are these compounds? How do they work? No one investigated it. So he snuck in some plants to his lab and started to do the research. And what he found was so extraordinary and so pro profoundly transforming to, to our world, actually, that um, it started this, this uh, you know, revelation, revolution. And what he found was not just understanding the components of this plant and what these, com the many components, there are 144 different oils in this plant, what they all can do, but he discovered something else of profound and immense importance. He discovered that the compounds in these plants actually fit into very specific receptors or docking stations in our body. And they fit into receptor sites that no one identified before. And he discovered what is known as the endocannabinoid system. So the compounds in hemp are called cannabinoids. And they fit into a system in our body of docking stations. And, he, and our body makes some of these compounds in, endogenously, which is why he called it the endo-endogenous endocannabinoid system, but it's a system that also can be replenished from taking of uh, compounds from plants, like the hemp plant. Now, why is this important? Why is this, why was this like a major discovery? I mean, if he hasn't won a Nobel Prize, he should. By the time he, you know, leaves this planet, he should have won a, 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 a Nobel Prize, because what he discovered has changed the lives of millions of people around the world, has transformed the health, has offered health to people who never had health before. And what the endocannabinoid system does in the body, it creates what we call homeostasis. So the body is an amazing system of checks and balances. You have to stay within a very narrow, narrow range to survive. Your pH has to be a certain range in your blood. Your temperature has to be in a very certain range. Your blood pressure, everything has to be in a very certain range for us to survive. And that condition is called homeostasis. It's when the body is able to be in perfect balance to perform all of the thousands and thousands and thousands of function optimally. So what the active ingredient of the hemp extract does is it, it, it reinforces, it strengthens, it awakens the endocannabinoid system which controls every system in your body. It is the general. It is the general. It, 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 it has the influence over your immune system, your reproductive system, your endocrine system, your respiratory system, your nervous system. It is the master controller. If you can support and optimize the functioning of your endocannabinoid system, you can get all your other systems back into balance and harmony and functioning again. Does that make sense? Do you think that's important? So we like to, in Western medicine, you know, you go to your, 
you know, you, you go to one doctor for this condition, you go to another doctor for that condition, you go to the third, and often they don't talk to each other. It's like breaking you up into bits. With the endocannabinoid system, working with the endocannabinoid system, it, by supporting the endocannabinoid system, you are able to support and regulate and bring into balance all these other systems in your body. That's profound. That's why this is a profound discovery. So, here's what's exciting. The hemp extract plant that we're gonna be talking about, which is taken as a uh, oral supplement. You can take it as, uh, a, as in this case, uh, it's a liquid. Comes in different forms, but what I recommend, and we'll talk about as a liquid, you can take it internally and you can also apply it topically. So you can address topical issues and you can ingest it internally to bring about greater restoration of your health. So that's what we're gonna talk about. So these compounds that are found in our body, well, first of all, the receptors in, the, the receptors in our body are, are receiving the compounds that, of these cannabinoids, these compounds, these molecules from the plant and from the ones we make. The problem is, under stress, under nutritional deficiencies, under all the toxicity, we are not able to keep up with the demand of producing these compounds that are necessary for a healthy endocannabinoid system. 21st century life has challenged us to remain in homeostasis. So we have what we call an endocannabinoid deficiency. It's a term you probably have never heard before, but you probably will be hearing more about it as you explore this realm of hemp. An endocannabinoid deficiency, which means that we are lacking the, the essential compounds in our body to stimulate the proper functioning of the endocannabinoid system, which then can bring about balance to all the other systems, okay? So some of these receptor sites for these compounds are found in our brain. And some are found in our immune system and in every other organ of our body. All the, all the organs or the tissues have receptor sites to these compounds. That's why the range of health benefits from taking a hemp extract is immense. It helps all the systems of our body. Everything, our liver, our spleen, our kidneys, our skin, our lungs, our reproductive system, our muscles, balances blood sugar. Every single system is affected and benefited and improved and balanced from taking in the cannabinoids, taking in the active ingredients of the hemp extract to bring about an optimal endocannabinoid tone so all these systems can be properly balanced. So what I want to do in the time I have is talk about some of the benefits. Talk about some of the conditions that have been proven, researched, studies have been done, demonstrated that this plant that does no harm, that has no side effects, that you can overdose on, if you, you know, took a whole bottle, I don't necessarily recommend it, but if you did, you'd get very relaxed and that would be about it. But you can get very relaxed with less than a whole bottle. I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> but the point is, there are no side effects. So, one of the major uh, areas of need and interest with the hemp extract is in the relief of pain. So pain is a huge problem. You can use the topical application of the hemp to the localized area. If you have migraines, you can put it around your neck. If you have arthritis, you know, your knees, your joints, wherever you need a back pain, you put it in there. Rub it in, massage it in, but you also want to build up your own endocannabinoid tone, so you want to take it internally, most importantly. So it has been used for all forms of arthritis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, as I said, migraines. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory plant, powerful anti-inflammatory. 
anti-inflammatory plant. It also is profoundly effective for autoimmune diseases. Now, autoimmune diseases are a really big story. There are about 80 different conditions that are defined as autoimmune diseases. Women tend to be three times more vulnerable to autoimmune diseases than men. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the most common thyroid condition affecting women. It's an autoimmune disease of the thyroid creating a sluggish thyroid. I was diagnosed many years ago, which I have successfully healed. But it's a big problem because then you're put on steroids and um, you start uh, uh, you know, getting a progression of the symptoms. Lupus, for instance. MS, for instance. These are autoimmune diseases. They, endometriosis was a common problem for women is now considered an autoimmune disease. There's no solution in the medical world for an autoimmune disease. They just put you on anti-inflammatories. Well, hemp extract has been proven to heal autoimmune diseases, to reduce the symptoms and to improve the functioning of autoimmune diseases. It does it in many ways, which I explain in the book, but I want to just let you know autoimmune disease can be improved through the use of hemp extract. So um, then we have cardiovascular diseases. It is estimated in a, in a few years that 4% of the American population will get a stroke or, or uh, a TIA. It's a really big problem. I've had friends, family, have had strokes. I know what that's like to have a stroke. And, of course, cardiovascular disease is one of the major conditions, one of the major diseases, um, probably the number one cause of death. So these conditions are generated from inflammation, from stress. They are uh, um, the create of the uh, uh, restriction in your blood vessels. There are a lot of things, there are a lot of reasons why we have cardiovascular disease. Hemp extract has the ability to reduce inflammation in your arteries, to relax your, your arteries, to remove the plaque from your arteries. That's huge. That's fundamental in healing, preventing and healing cardiovascular disease. So there's cardiovascular disease. Then we have the opioid crisis. 56,000 people died last year from opioid um, uh, overdose. And um, I was just reading just this morning there was a study that was done on opioids after surgery, and they found the use of opioids after surgery increases the pain and inflammation for weeks afterwards. You are in more pain from taking opioids than if you didn't have the opioid as the option. Well, now we have an option because the hemp extract products are able to go in, not only reduce the pain, but here's another amazing thing about this plant. It, it has these receptor sites in your brain that deal with addiction, with, um, with moods, with um, uh, cravings, and it helps people eliminate their addictive cravings. And the studies have shown it has helped with heroin, with cocaine, with tobacco, you know, things like opioids. Any addiction can be lessened or, and eliminated through the use of hemp. How do you like that? What a, you know, what a, what a phenomenal, phenomenal gift nature has given us. So when it comes to the opioid crisis, there is a solution to help in people weaning off of their addiction and also addressing the pain for which they're put on it in the first place. So we just talked about addictions, and um, we have to talk about the brain and neurodegenerative conditions. Now, this is what really amazed me when I was researching hemp. First of all, it helps reducing inflammation in the brain leading to neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's, like Parkinson's disease, like what we call so vascular dementia. This is all from oxidative stress and inflammation going on in the brain. So the hemp is actually, because we have so many of the receptor sites in our brain that hemp optimizes their functioning, we are able to improve neurodegenerative diseases. There's more that goes on with the brain, however. We have found that the uh, use of hemp extract is able to create new brain cells. 
you actually get smarter <laughs> by taking hemp. You not only reduce the damage going on in the brain, you are building new brain cells. You can regenerate your brain, which is pretty phenomenal. That's what we're learning about the brain. The brain has that capacity. We can regenerate. So when we talk about the brain and the impact of the brain, one of the uses of hemp extract is to help with post-traumatic stress syndrome. Now, we know, we've heard about this. People can have post-traumatic stress syndrome from, you know, from war, but from any trauma. I talked to someone recently, and he was an ambulance driver, paramedic. He had post-traumatic stress from what he saw on the job. It's a really challenging condition. However, hemp extract has been proven to help with post-traumatic stress. Number one, it reduces the stress levels in the body. It improves the mood. It helps people to sleep. But here's the big thing that blew my mind about these compounds in the hemp extract. They are able to communicate to the neurons backwards, like backwards in time, and extinguish the stressful, adverse memories that are the origin of post-traumatic stress. Isn't that incredible? Amazing. So we now have this safe solution, or at least a part of a protocol to help people address post-traumatic stress. We also must talk about how the hemp extract has been used in epilepsy. And this is one of the early areas where research was done there are children who have conditions, well, first of all, epilep drugs for epilepsy are very toxic, are very intense, they're very damaging to the body, and often ineffectual. And what we have found is that hemp extract actually can reduce epileptic seizures in children and adults. In some cases, permanently stop them, in other cases, reduce the number of seizures that um, children are having. When nothing else has been able to help, and sometimes these kids have 100 seizures a day. They don't have a life, and they are creating more brain damage. And one other thing, I talked to a friend who had an older dog who was getting seizures. Guess what? She put that dog on hemp extract, and you know what happened? No more seizures. No more need for medication, no more seizures. So our pets actually benefit immensely as much as we do. You, and there's a whole section in the book on how hemp extract has been used for dogs, for cats, for horses, and I don't know, you probably can give it to your guinea pigs. I don't know about your turtle, but why not? Because the endocannabinoid system has been found in all life forms except insects. All life forms have an endocannabinoid system. That's how profound the system is. The endocrine system is closely connected to the endocannabinoid system. When you can improve your endocannabinoid tone, you can reduce hot flashes, night sweats, PMS, endometriosis, you can improve bone health. Every hormonal issue that's associated with younger women or with perimenopausal and menopausal women can be reduced or eliminated through hemp extract because it has a direct relationship on balancing your hormones. And it helps with fertility in women. It helps with fibromyalgia. It helps with depression and anxiety. It helps you to sleep, which is a big problem in our country. It safely helps you get into deep sleep states, and it shortens your REM sleep, which is your dreaming. So people who are dreaming excessively are too long in REM sleep. It reduces the time in REM sleep, and it increases the time in deep regenerative sleep. You can heal if you don't sleep. Okay, it supports the gut. It helps heal the inflammation in the gut. It helps with motility in the gut. It is helping all autoimmune diseases start in the gut, so that's why it helps autoimmune diseases, but it helps with uh, metabolic syndrome. It actually helps to create more fat burning in the body. It helps the inflammation that fat creates. It helps with um, every aspect of our health. But I want to also say it's an anti-aging formula. I don't just take it because I have a problem. I take it because I want my body to work optimally until my last breath. Amen. Amen. You can get healthier and younger as you get older, and these products 
are part of the solution to heal, regenerate, rejuvenate our bodies at any age. Safe for children, safe for pets, and everyone else and everything else in between. So I just want to finish with, um, everyone knows, talked about it safe. I want to, um, and, and Dr. Blair is going to talk more about the product and what it is, but I want to say briefly while I have the moment, this is no THC, you're not going to get high, and it is organic. It is third party, third party registered. It is like the purest product that has the integrity of Frank Davis, who we know is a man of high integrity. He, would, he just is, always astounds me how he can create the, the most amazing product and the purest product. And um, you can absolutely trust anything that Frank Davis develops. And this is his product. And um, this is the quote. Let me get here and read this, because Thomas Edison had a lot of good things to say. There were never so many able, active minds at work on the problems of disease as now, and all their discoveries are tending toward the simple truth that you can't improve on nature. And that's the story. So I just am so thrilled to be able to share this information with you, to provide you with safe, effective natural solutions to bring you back to optimal, to optimal health at any age. So thank you so much for being here and um, have a blessed day. <laughs>